Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Back with another set guide and review, and this time it is for Topps Heritage. Heritage is coming out this Friday in Hobby, but some of it has sneaked out into the wild already a little early. So we've got a little bit of a sneak preview of what's available in retail. But what we really want to know is, is this a great set or is it one to forget? There's only one way to find out. Watch the most in-depth set guide in review you're going to find anywhere on the internet. It is time for One Cent Sports Cards Tops Heritage Set Guide in Review. With the baseball card collecting season well underway, we get our first throwback set. It is 2021 Topps Heritage, taking inspiration from the 1972 Topps set. But what we all want to know, hey, is this a good set or not? Well, the way that we find out is we put it up against the one cent sensational set ranking system, which is the most in-depth ranking system you're going to find anywhere on the internet. Let me explain a little bit about the sensational set ranking. First of all, like I said, you're not going to find a more in-depth set ranking system anywhere on the internet. Why? Well, we break it down into 10 different categories. So this set, we're going to break it down into what the relics are, what the inserts are. We will cover off on the parallel rainbow, uh, what the cost is, what the overall value is. And then what we will do is give each of those categories one to 10 points. Then we add up all of those points and use the scale over on the left to give it a one to five star rating. Obviously, the more stars, the better the set is. Then what we do is we compare the 2021 set with the set that came out last year to see if the set is getting better or if it's regressed a little bit. And we will also compare it to all of the other sets that have come out so far in the 2021 card collecting season to see how it ranks against its peers in this collecting season. So before we begin, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It's the best way that you can support the channel and show that you like the videos and you like these set guides and reviews. If you haven't already, now is the time to hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you want to be the first to see these set guides and reviews, all of our card investing videos, all of our breaks, be sure to hit that bell so you are notified as soon as videos go live. So let's dig in. With 2021 Topps Heritage, we're going to cover off on a few things here. First, the set highlights. So that 10,000 foot view of what the set has to offer and what we're looking for out of it. Then we'll cover off on the different buying formats that you can get Topps Heritage in. Dig a little bit deeper, go into what the key cards are, what the nice parallels are, what the variations are. Um, cover off a little bit deeper onto each of those categories. And then I'll even tell you which teams I think will be the best teams to target in team breaks. Then I will give you what my personal opinions are about what is the set positives are and what the set negatives are. Every set has both. And that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set ranking where we will comp where we will put this set up against the ranking system to see how good it actually is. And then we'll check out all of the ratings that we have given for 2021 so far. So for Topps Heritage, the first thing you need to know, it has been around for a long time. It is a set collector set that celebrates nostalgia. And this year, we're celebrating the year 1972, Watergate year. The set has 500 cards in the base set checklist. And cards number 401 through 500 are all going to be high numbered short prints. So a lot of short prints that you can pull out of this. It is in its 20 first year of production been around for a while and this year like i said we're using the 1972 tops design as inspiration for parallels this set has a small parallel rainbow only three and it is not a typical rainbow that you would find in a chrome set or something else heritage has and always will use more variations rather than rainbow parallels this is one of tops 
larger releases that comes out in the year. It's available both in hobby and retail formats. It is a very popular set and it uses a more traditional card stock. So if you go back to the 90s and the 80s and the 70s, it's more of that card stock feel. If you're looking for autos and if you're looking for relics, there is one auto or relic found in every hobby box and in every hobby box, you're going to find a top loader. The set does focus on today's players. There's no prospects in the set. However, in a lot of the inserts and a lot of the relics, you will find a lot of retired stars that are featured in the set. Roberto Clemente is also featured with an insert subset um, that is titled The Great One. So if you're a Roberto Clemente fan, this is definitely a set you want to check out. And relics are featured heavily throughout the entire set lineup. You can even get coins from 1972, stamps from 1972 as relics in this set. And the always popular error cards are going to be back again for 2021. They are errors on purpose. And finally, hot boxes are available in the hobby box format and in the blaster box format. So you can even get a uh, a hot box in a blaster format, which is pretty cool. So what are those buying formats? Well, first we have hobby and you can get a hobby case. A case is going to have 12 boxes per case. Each box is going to have 24 packs and each pack has nine cards per pack. So the total cards on that is 2,592 cards. Costs you about 1,650 bucks right now. So your cost per card sitting at about 60 three cents. Uh, it is guaranteed to give you 12 autographs or relics. And of course, you're going to get the 12 box toppers and all sorts of different variations, short prints and whatnot. If you don't have 1650 bucks to drop, you can always go the hobby box route. Obviously going to give you 24 packs per box, nine cards per pack. So 216 total cards. You can get it for about $140 right now. Cost per card around 65 cents. Guaranteed to get one autograph or relic and the one box topper. If you like shopping for retail, tons of different retail formats. First thing, if you can find it, you can get a retail box. Basically the same setup as a hobby box. However, it is, does not guarantee an auto or, or a relic, but it is only about a hundred bucks current price. So your cost per card comes down to about 46 cents. Then you can also get a blaster box. Now that one's going to have eight packs in it. It will have nine cards per pack. So 72 total cards cost you around 20 bucks to get it cost per card all the way down to 27 cents. And in target, you can get 1972 die cut cards and it will be your lowest cost per card format. And don't forget you have a chance at a hot box. Then you have the hanger box, which is going to have 35 cards in the box, about 10 bucks for retail cost you about 29 cents a card. Fat packs will be available, 20 cards in those, about six bucks, cost per card around 30 cents. And gravity packs, of course, are going to be available for this. Um, about three bucks retail, maybe a little bit less, but it'll cost you about 33 cents for those. So those are all the different buying formats. Be on the lookout for specific buying formats that you'll find in Walmart versus Target versus Meyer. Sometimes they do have their specific parallels as well. So what are the key cards we're going to be chasing? Well, for the rookies, here's who we're going to be looking for. And I'll note what this IA, the IA stands for here in a moment. First, we have Alec Bohm, obviously a big rookie in 2020. And that IA stands for inaction. So it's an inaction, which I had on screen earlier with Sixto Sanchez. So it's actually an inaction photo. One thing to know about Heritage, most of them are uh, portrait type shots and not in action shots. But the inaction thing creates a little bit of confusion in the set. And I'll explain why here in a little bit. But we do have Alec Bohm. We have Sixto Sanchez and Jesus Sanchez as a Marlins rookie card. We've got a Jake Cronenworth in action, a Joey Bart in action, a Cabrian Hayes in action, a Ryan Mountcastle in action, Joe Adele in action, Dylan Carlson in action, Christian Pache in action as well. Now, the thing to understand here is these a lot of these players do have other rookie cards in the set, so you'll see them twice. The difference being that the ones that have them singular on a card are the in action ones, whereas Heritage 
typically will have two, maybe even three rookies from a team or from the same position on a ball field on a card. And so they do have those as well. A great example of that would be the Sixto and Jesus Sanchez. We also have Ian Anderson as a rookie card that is not in inaction and Kybert Ruiz as well. For our parallels, autos, inserts, and relics that we're looking for in Topps Heritage, well, there are chrome variations. So there's a chrome set. It's only 100 cards out of the base set. And that's, of course, going to have a parallel rainbow. And there's also many parallels, so many versions of the 1972 cards. That All those cards are going to be numbered to 100 apiece. So pretty nice pulls there. Obviously, we, the real one autos are going to be back. And you can get a special edition red ink numbered to 72 on those. And there are short print image variation autos as well. We also have dual and triple real one autos. We have cut signatures. Some of those are amazing. That is one of the toughest pulls in Heritage. But if you get one, they are awesome. We have the flashback auto relics. We'll cover off on what those are in a minute. Uh, the 1972 mint relics. Those are the relics that have the coins in them along with the postage stamp relics. So obviously those have a postage stamp. And you have the great one buybacks, which is going to be Roberto Clemente buybacks from 1972. And a very cool retail edition, the Topps Venezuela stamp set, which Topps Venezuela, apparently I can't say Venezuela. Um, that is a set that actually was introduced in 1972. So they're bringing that back and it is available in retail. So very cool that they're doing that for Heritage this year. So with the base parallels and variations, normally we would just cover off on parallels here, but there's so many variations, it's almost as if it's a parallel. Parallels, like I said, very small, three color rainbow. You've got a black border numbered to 50, which you can see Luis Robert over there at the right. That is what that is going to look like. They're only available in hobby. You have a flip stock, which means that the gloss is going to be on the back of the card, not the front of the card. Those are numbered to five and also only available in hobby. And then you have a French variation where the writing on the back of the card is done in French. For your variations, you have a team name color swap. So the color of the team name becomes different. You have the mini uh, cards, which are numbered to 100. And then you've got the ultra rare throwback uniforms. Some of the most popular pulls, very tough to pull. But basically it is today's stars in their throwback uniforms. If you pull one of those, it's an awesome pull. The action images, which are available in hobby only. And if you pull one of those short print cards from 401 to 500, those become even more rare. So the action image variations, and that's where the in action cards that you are going to find in the base set create a little bit of confusion because the action variation cards will not say in action on them. So if you pull one that says in action, you have not pulled an action image variation. You've just pulled a base in action card. What you're looking for is a regular card of a player in action without it saying in action. I get it. Very confusing, but I hope you followed that. There are also more variations. So there's the nickname variations where instead of using the player's real name, it uses their nickname. The error cards are back, which will be um, all sorts of fun to find. And then you've got the missing stars. So the two stars below the team name disappear. And then you've got the Chrome set, which is a hundred card set. And there's a parallel rainbow within those that is a refractor, black, gold, and super fractor. And don't forget, you can also get a hot box refractor. Those are going to be purple. If you pull one of those, you're going to get one per pack. They are available in hobby and blaster. Not, not numbered, but they are limited. For the inserts. Tons of different inserts that you're going to find in Topps Heritage. The first one going to be the 1972 die cuts, which have 25 cards. Now, what's interesting, not a lot of parallels that you're going to find in these. In fact, almost none. Uh, there's also the 1972 Topps Baseball Posters box topper. There are 25 cards in that set, and you're going to find them in one of two hobby boxes. And that Mike Trout over there on the left is... Um, 
Well, that I, I actually don't think that is one. Uh, there's the 1972 Topps Candy Lids. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a retail only release. You've got the baseball flashbacks insert, um, which will flashback to moments that happened in 1972. There's 15 cards in that set. New Age Performers returns again in 2021. That's where it takes performers and compares them to players from 1972. 25 cards in that set. You've got the news flashbacks. And you've got more inserts. You've got the oversized 1972 Topps Baseball box topper. There's 50 cards in that set, and you can get a parallel. So that Mike Trout that was on the last slide, um, that is what those look like. And you can get autographed versions of those. So some of them can be autographed. Obviously, they're only going to be available in hobby. The autographs are numbered to 25 or less. Then we have the great one, Roberto Clemente subset. That is going to have 25 cards in it. Then and now returns. That's got 15 cards in it. And like I said, that Topps Venezuela stamp set, uh, which is going to have current stars on the Topps Venezuela set design from 1972. That card's got uh, that set's got 25 cards in it as well. For the relics, which are a big draw for Topps Heritage, we've got the 1972 mint relics. There are 50 different cards in that. You're only going to find it in the hobby format. Different versions you can find. You can find one with nickels, dimes, quarters, and half dollars. And as you go up in, in the amount of currency, the numbers on those go down. For for example, the half dollar is a one of one. You've also got the 1972 Topps Baseball Originals box topper. Um, it is unknown how many cards are in there, only because they are buybacks that you that they have that will all be cards from the 1972 top set. You're gonna find those in one of two hobby boxes, and they all will be foil stamped buybacks. Then you can get the 1972 U.S. Posted stamp. There's going to be 20 cards in that set. They will each be numbered to 50, and you'll get a stamp from 1972. You also have the Clubhouse Collection Relics. These are going to be the ones that you find most often in your hobby boxes. 76 different cards in that set. You do have a little parallel rainbow of gold numbered to 99 or less, and then a patch one of one hobby. And we have more relics. The first one going to be the clubhouse collection dual relic there's only five cards in that set but they are all numbered hand numbered to 72 and you can get a one of one in that as well the triple relic for clubhouse collection exists as well five cards in that set each numbered to 25 with a one of one parallel and the quad relic which you see over there on the right five cards in that each numbered to 10 with a patch one of one variation we also have I'm calling it a relic. It is the Great One buybacks, which are buybacks of the Roberto Clemente, and those will be foil stamped buybacks as well. So those would be some awesome pulls if you get one of those in Heritage. And we have autographs, which are not the focus of the set. I know in 2021, everyone is obsessed with autographs, but autographs take a little bit of a back seat here. But the autographs that are available do tend to hold really nice value on the secondary market. So let's cover off on what those are. First of all, the Rangers inaugural season, they started in 1972. They get a special seven card set, all going to be from the original Rangers team. All of those will be numbered to 100 or less. And the always popular real one autographs are back. There are 72 cards in that set. That will, if you find an auto, that will most likely be one of the ones you find. But if you get lucky, you could find one of the special edition ones, which those are the ones that have the red ink signature on them. And they have 72 cards in that. They are all hand numbered to 72. And there is a parallel patch one of one for those. Then you've got the real one dual autographs. Very nice hits there. Seven cards, some monster names on that set checklist. They're all numbered to 25 or less, and they are hand numbered, and they're only available in hobby. And you have triple autographs, six cards in that set, hand numbered to five, only available in hobby as well. And finally, we have some autograph relics to cover off on. First of all, some of the most awesome hits that you can find in Heritage. The 1972 baseball cut signatures, all going to be cut signatures from Legends of Baseball, 10 cards in that set, obviously all one of one. And there are the celebrity 
cut signatures, some very nice celebrities that they have chosen that were kind of highlighted in 1972 this year. Uh, 10 cards in the celebrity set checklist, obviously because they're cut signatures, they are all one of ones as well. But you can also get the Clubhouse Collection Auto Relics. There's 12 cards in that set, each hand numbered to 25 or less. And you got the Parallel Patch one of ones. And you've got the Dual Auto Relics, which you see over there on the right. There's three cards in that set, each numbered to 10 or less. So that is going to be our autographed relics. Uh, well, actually, we have one more. We have the flashback autographed relics. So those will be flashbacks back to 1972, of course. Eight cards in that set. And there is a parallel patch, one of one, in that autographed relic. So with all that being said, tons of different cards, tons of different inserts, tons of different relics, tons of different variations. Who do we want to target? In a team break, uh, lots of people going to be breaking this, probably be doing case breaks. Um, and I believe that I have found six teams that would be very good polls, a couple sleepers, and I'm going to let you know who the best team is, who has the most autos, all that type of stuff. So my first team is going to be who I think is the best team. Again, it's my personal opinion. You can tell me I'm wrong. However, the Atlanta Braves going to be pretty tough to be in a break. Um, they have 23 base cards in the set, 10 different autos, only one rookie card. However, they do have four different variations. All of those variations are Ronald Acuna Jr. variations, but they do have 10 different relics and a large insert number in 26 different inserts that you can pull from the Braves. So a very, very solid team in the Braves. But who's got the most autos? Well, they're technically tied with the Braves, but that would be the Los Angeles Angels, also a very good team. They've got 19 base cards, 10 different autos. Yes, you can get a Mike Trout. Yes, you can get an Albert Pujols, Shohei Otani, you name it. They are in there. There are There is one rookie card. That's going to be Joe Adele. Six different variations, seven different relics, and 21 inserts. Then you also have the Chicago Cubs, which I feel maybe not the best team, but a very solid choice, almost a sleeper, but I, it's hard to call the Cubs a sleeper. They have 24 base cards, seven different autos, one rookie card, seven different variations, and a high relic number in 13, plus they have 30 different inserts. The Cubs, if you get them in a case break, you're going to end up getting a ton of cards. If you can get them in a random team break, um, it's a great pull. You might even be able to trade for them. Um, so keep an eye out for the Chicago Cubs. But the team that I think has the most value is going to be the Philadelphia Phillies. So they've got 20 base cards, nine autos, one rookie card. Obviously, that's Alec Bohm. Um, They have 10 different variation cards, which I think separates them from some of the other teams that we've listed so far. They only have six different relics, but they do have 28 different inserts. So high number of autos, lots of different variations you can pull. Some of the autos that you can pull out of there are very nice. We've got Alec Bohm and stuff that are in there, plus Philly greats, think Mike Smith and whatnot. My first sleeper team going to be the Cincinnati Reds. They've got 19 base cards, eight autos, two rookie cards, only one variation, but they do have 10 relics and 23 inserts. And the Cincinnati Reds are not typically thought of as a team that you root, that is like one of the top five that you want to break. So if you are in a random team break, want to make a trade, the Cincinnati Reds going to be a nice team to trade for. I do believe that you've got a decent chance at getting one of those relics or autos, as you can see, even compared to what I'm calling the best teams um, or the most autos. They've got almost as many as the Angels more variations, but I believe you can get the uh, Reds for a fairly um, inexpensive price in any sort of team break um, that you're buying on like eBay or something like that. My other sleeper team is going to be the Twins. The Twins have not made the list in a while, but the Twins have 21 base cards in this. They've got nine different autos, one rookie card, four different variations, again, 10 relics. So nine autos, 10 relics, 24 inserts, don't think you can go wrong with the Twins here. And when you look at the Twins auto checklist, the Twins have some fantastic um, retired stars that you can pull out of there. The Twins are going to hold a lot of value. I believe if you can get them in a uh, random team break or if you're buying them on eBay in a pick your team break, I do think that you uh, can't go wrong with the Twins. So keep an eye out for the Twins as well. 
So with all that being said, what are the set positives? There's a lot going on with Heritage. Um, so I believe that the set positives, my first thing, which I love about Heritage, is it is a true collector's set. Um, it is a nice variety um, of, a who, and of the who's who in baseball today. So if you were like a team collector set, this is one of the most important card sets that you can have because it's going to have the most players from your team. Um, there's a reason why when you go to a baseball stadium, they normally are selling Topps Heritage team sets. It's because more baseball cards of your team that you like are made in Topps Heritage than they are in any other set. It's a 500 card set just to begin with, and that doesn't even include high number, which comes out later this year. It is a set collector set. Um, it's very hard to collect. Well, not very hard, but to collect those high number short prints becomes a little bit of a challenge and set collector set are becoming more and more rare. But I think that is a big draw for Topps Heritage. The other thing I like, the auto checklist is tight. Um, it's a solid mix of retired greats, rookie stars, and they're all going to be on card autos. The real one autos are obviously very well sought after, but the auto checklist does not say, hey, let's just put a ton of autos in here. Um, you're going to find good players. You're going to find retired greats. You're going to find rookies. You're going to find current superstars. Not a ton of filler in there. It's a tight one. Yes, they are a harder pull. And no, they are not guaranteed in any format. But if you can get one of those autos, they're very, very nice. Um, and then the other thing is there are some rookies in here that were not featured in the Series 1 flagship set, which is kind of nice. And... Um, I do like that there's a lot of hobby format exclusives. So there's a reason to pay a little bit more for that format. So a lot of the, a lot of the inserts and stuff that you can pull, you can only find them in hobby. So it drives people over to the local card shop um, and gives you a reason to spend a little bit more on hobby than you would on retail. And then the other thing is I do think that it's fun to search for a bit of the more obscure and hard to pull variations. The variations are very fun to find in this set. Going to be kind of easy to find. It will actually say if it's a variation on the back of the card. It'll be kind of underneath the number of the card this year. Um, so if it is a throwback, it'll say throwback on the back. But they are fun to pull. It makes you kind of be with the cards a little bit more, not just flying through them like a lot of breakers do, just looking for hits. That is not a thing that you can do with Topps Heritage because you will miss a lot of different variations and whatnot. So I think it's fun. It slows people down a little bit and actually makes people appreciate the cards a little bit. But there's also some set negatives. Um, my first one would be that there's not a lot of updates to the inserts and the relics from the last few years. There's a couple in there, but for the most part, it is the same stuff that Topps Heritage has been doing for a while. I do feel like it's maybe in need of a little refresh, maybe not a total revamp, but I would have liked to have seen a little bit more from the inserts and relics in regards to pushing the set forward a little bit. The other thing, there's fairly long odds on all of the parallel and variation hits. The odds on this set are going to be long this year. It's produced in hobby and retail. And the, and the fact of the matter is, there's not a ton of parallels and the variations are designed to be tougher pulls. So the odds are going to be a little bit long. That turns some people away. So that's maybe a negative. And then obviously, um, it doesn't hold the same value as, say, Top Series 1. However, the autos do. In fact, some of these autos might actually be worth more than a Top Series 1 auto. But typically, a base card, rookie card, is not going to hold the same value as a flagship card or a Chrome card or something like that. Um, the other thing, the cost per auto is very high. There's no guarantee in any format, and they are tougher pulls. So if you're searching for autos, there's probably better sets for you to be looking at. If you're searching for uh, sets and um, if you're searching for variations and stuff like that, you may want to look at this set. But autos, chasing it in Topps Heritage can be fool's gold sometimes. They are tough to pull. But if you do get one, those real one autos have a lot of value on the secondary market. The other thing, with the larger checklist, sometimes when you open packs, you're going to say, well, I didn't get a hit in this pack or a parallel or an insert. So sometimes that can come across as boring. Again, it is designed to be that way. It is a 500 card set. So not every card can just be amazing. Um, so 
but I feel like that plays negatively in today's card collecting mindset of every, it'll almost be the exact opposite of Donruss baseball, where you get some sort of parallel or insert or variation in every pack. This will be, this will feel a lot different. This will feel much more like what it was like to open up packs in 1972. So if you're nostalgic like that, you're going to love that. But if you're looking for a hit in every pack, this is not one that you want to be looking at. Finally, uh, I kind of have already touched on this, but the newer collectors that have shown up back into the hobby that maybe don't get what Topps Heritage is about, um, they're not going to understand why they're not getting a hit in this. Um, and I think it turns a lot of new collectors off because they feel like packs are so, uh, quote unquote, like a dud or something like that. Um, and that's not the case. The set is designed to feel like a 1972 set. It is designed for set collectors and collectors in general. It is not targeted at card flippers and investors. It is targeted for collectors and set collectors more specifically. And so a lot of the newer collectors that are very interested in flipping and investing, which by the way, there's nothing wrong with that, but they may not get what Topps Heritage is all about. I think your true collectors, um, and people that don't just collect for investing purposes, they get it a little bit more. But if you're a newcomer, this set could very well get lost on you. So with all that being said, that brings us to our one cent sensational set ranking. How does 2021 Topps Heritage rank? Well, like I said, we're going to put it into 10 different categories. So let's start covering off on those. For appeal. I, this year, I gave it a 5 out of 10, and here's why. Um, with the mindset of the 2021 collector, uh, where everyone is very hit-driven, I believe that a lot of people think Heritage is not that good of a set. I also believe that those people are wrong. There's a lot of fun stuff that, to find in here, but again, uh, from an investment level, um, just not a set that I, I get it, not a set that a lot of newer card collectors are going to be jumping, you know, lines in the, in the target to get at this set. So I think the appeal could improve over time, but for this year, I'm going to go ahead and give it a five. For the base set checklist, I'm giving it a nine. One of the best base set checklists you're going to find all year. Um, it's, a, it's a 500 card set checklist. All of your rookies are going to be in there. Um, you've got a ton of, it's, it's basically the best set that you can collect if you're a team collector or a set collector. A very nice checklist. A few minor nitpicks that I have about some of the rookies and some of the repeats of the rookies. So I didn't give it a 10, but I will give it a 9. For the inserts and relics, the I would love to have gone higher, but they seem a little bit stale. So I'm going to go ahead and give them a six. To be fair, some of the in, some of the relics are hold a ton of value, um, and some of the inserts this year are really nice. Uh, but it doesn't push the envelope at all a little bit. So I give it a six. Um, and then for the parallels and variations, I went ahead and gave it a five this year. They have not done a ton new. Um, the parallels and variations, again, when you're looking for this stuff, when you hit them, you want to see them. They want to be awesome. There's only a three color parallel rainbow. It's supposed to be that way. And I get it. Uh, but the variations a little bit harder to pull a little bit more obscure. Some of them don't hold a ton more value. Some of them do, of course, um, especially those throwback uniforms, um, and the high number action short prints. I get that, but overall, uh, we're not we're not pushing the envelope here at all. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a five for the auto checklist. I'm going to give it a seven. It's a good auto checklist. It's tight. I would have loved to have gone higher, but there's no guarantee in any format. So it's a little hard. To, uh, the, my problem with it is it's really hard to kind of find one of those and there's no guaranteed format. But if you find one, most of the autos are pretty good in this. I go ahead and give it a seven for the pack odds and productions. I'm going to give it a four. It does not have the same production numbers as series one had. However, the odds are still pretty long. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a four. The card quality, I'm giving it a seven because I love the fact that it is on an old card stock, a vintage feeling card stock. Some of you may completely disagree with me. Some of you uh, um, people that love the chromium stock and whatnot, but as baseball cards go, I will always love a standard cardboard. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a seven. 
And then historical value, uh, not the most valuable set, but not the most invaluable set either. Some of the uh, cards in here can be worth a lot of money. The autos, the throwback uniforms, um, some of the other variations that you can pull out of here, and even some of the base rookie cards and some of the um, parallels if you can find some of those. But like I said, not quite worth as much as Series 1, but not also not the worst set that you can find on the secondary market. For artistic value, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7. I love the 1972 design. I, I love the fact that the relics are kind of a neat design there. Um, and just overall, I think the 72 design is really cool. Glad that they brought that back. Uh, so I go ahead and give it a 7. And finally, our cost value. I give it a 4.5 stars. We can find it in retail. We can find it cheap. However, again with the cost creep, uh, hobby boxes priced a little bit higher than they should. It's going to, of course, be tough to find it in retail. Um, and so cost value, as has been the trend in 2021, it is dragging down sets in 2021 because cards seem to be more expensive versus the value that you're finding out of them. It would be nice to find a, a, a box where you're consistently pulling somewhere between 65 and 80 percent of the value of the box right out of the box. But that is not the case in 2021. So that is discouraging. You're probably going to find it, uh, you know, somewhere more in the 50% range and sometimes even less. So we're going to add all these scores up and find out where 2021 Tops Heritage landed on the one cent sensational set ranking. Its final rating, a 59.5. So it is close to a four star set, but not quite. We're in a three star set, but it is a very highly rated three star set, almost four stars. If you are a set collector, if you like nostalgia, if you like the fact that there is not just parallels and hits at, at everywhere, if you are someone that is a collector, if you are someone that likes searching for more obscure variations and stuff, this is your set. If you are someone that likes chromium cards in five rookie autos in a box, you need to stay away from Topps Heritage. Um, it, it is not your set. But I do believe that for collectors, this set is a very important set that should continue to come out uh, for people that have been in the hobby for a long time, for people that like the nostalgia, for people that were collecting in 72 and want to revisit their youth. Um, this is a fantastic set. So overall, it's a very good set. Uh, compared to last year, it actually got a much better score this year. Last year, I scored this as a 53. Um, a lot of that probably landed in the fact that the design last year of 71, not a big fan of the 71 design, so artistic value was down. Um, and the auto checklist, I don't think was as good last year. Still pretty good. But overall, um, I brought it down. I, it, last year's set, I don't think is as good as this year's set. So we're starting to see a trend here where some of the sets in 2021 that the manufacturers are doing a better job of making the sets really deliver. I think they feel the pressure of saying, well, the sets uh, are, are more, the boxes are more expensive to buy. So we got to kind of offer more. So we're seeing that a little bit in the set ranking scores, which is good. Um, but the question then becomes, how does Topps Heritage rank with all the other sets to date? Well, Topps Heritage comes in at three out of six. So we've only had six come out so far this year. There's a seventh one that also comes out on this Friday, which is Leaf Lumber, which I have not reviewed yet. Um, however, with that being said, Topps Opening Day also came out this week. Topps Heritage falls right into the middle. Do I believe it's going to be a top 10 set at the end of the season? Probably not. Um, but Topps Heritage, a very important set, guys. So I really do hope that you'll check it out. I believe that it has a lot to offer for collectors and set collectors and people that have been around the hobby for a while that kind of understand the set a little bit more. Um, but not quite up there with Top Series 1, which still leads the way. Inception is a fantastic kind of higher-end product. Um, 
a little bit of cost creep on that, but for the most part, Inception is a really fun thing. We've seen that being opened over the course of the last week or so, and as you guys have probably noticed, some very fun cards, so I believe Inception being at a 70. We have yet to have a five-star set this year, but we've got a couple that are four, We've and we've got a lot that have kind of fallen into the threes, and tops opening day down there at the bottom, not, not a bad one either, but kind of a lower-end three-star set. So, you guys... If you didn't see it at the beginning, be sure to throw over to first, hit that like button for me, subscribe if you like these set reviews, and be sure to hit that bell so you can be the first one to know how good sets are before you start buying into breaks and everything else. And with that, I am going to sign off. I hope you guys are having fantastic luck on your Topps Heritage uh, pack polls. I hope you guys are being good to your family, being good to your friends, and being good to your neighbors. And until next time, Take care.